Hello everybody, I'm Pura. And I'm Bob. And we are Just Passing Through. And this is our next exit. Come and join us. Sometimes referred to as our home our base. home base. <laughs> <laughs> so I gotta ask you, do you still feel like you're a full-time RVer? Uh, not so much. I, I, I feel like I'm still an RVer. Yeah. But I'm, I'm enjoying being home for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I agree with that part. I still look at myself and think about being full-time RVers and in that community and relating to all you full-timers. But yes. then we're sitting around like this at the <laughs> house. And I said, you're not a full-timer. You're, no, you're just, just part-time, You're just I a guess. vacationer. Yeah. It's a, it's a weird mindset. It is. It is. I love having a home base. I do. I totally do. But boy, was I excited when we sold our house and... I oh, started yeah. saying got rid of our stuff. We never got rid of never our got stuff. Rid stored of the stuff. it. Yeah. That was so uh, freeing to be able to travel for several years, three or four yes. years, yes. and never have to worry about anything pulling us back. That's true. As long as it was in storage, it was fine. Yeah. But, <laughs> but now that storage got expensive. <laughs> yeah, it did get expensive. It was still worth it. You were right. That's a good, our best decision, as it turned out. But uh, I'm starting to really enjoy coming home. Oh yes. Definitely. One of the main things is like we got an R older RV and we've always got maintenance issues. Oh yes. And it's when you're in RV parks, a lot of them don't allow you to do maintenance. We do it anyway. And we try not to get kind caught. <laughs> <laughs> and we have to do it. Uh, sometimes it's kind of like the last time we changed airbags. We changed three airbags a couple of years ago. Right. And I had to get a jack and a two by four <sighs> and jack up the coach. You remember that? And then I was in there walking in the coach, and it popped loose and slammed down. If I'd have been in there, that would have been really bad. But you were under at one point in time, and you just had moved out, and it yeah. fell. Yeah. That was a little too too close to the It comfort. was way too close, yeah. That was, that was way too, and it's stupid. I mean, don't leave your comments about safety. I understand all of that. Sometimes <laughs> we, we take shortcuts. We shouldn't, but we do. <laughs> And sometimes we got no choice, we just have to. Right, right. But being here, I changed all the airbags on the uh, five airbags on the driver's side. Yes. And I got to get a couple of jacks and jack up the house frame from the chassis frame. Yes. So I had that space and it made it a whole lot safer. Way safer. And a whole lot easier. And a lot easier, yeah, exactly. That's what it I was saying. It still was a hell of a job. Right. It took two days, Thank two goodness. hours at a time. Thank goodness. But that's such a good, a good feeling. And then the motor on the steps quit working. Yeah. So had to fix that. And I could have fixed that in an RV park. That wouldn't have been too bad. Well, Troubleshooting been, was the biggest thing. Except you'd have been laying right under there fixing it. Yeah, so. but they don't give you grief on that too much. But you start taking stuff apart and getting tools scattered all over. Right. I'll throw up a little video here. You can see I had tools scattered all over and grease <laughs> from head to toe. He does uh, that. But point being, I enjoy having a home base. Yes. So either way you like, whether you're part-time, full-time, vacationer, the RV lifestyle, retirement in the RV lifestyle is, a is fun way, lifestyle. way cool. Yes, way and cool. Kind of right. speaking on that same kind of note is our rally's coming up. Yes, We've, very soon. Yeah, and it's a, well, a little just, over a month. Just a little over a month away. Uh -huh. Yeah. Thanks to Ron and Sharon. For taking their airstream down, yeah, parking they were out parked there. out here, visited with us a couple of days. They did, and then last winter they spent a month across the street. Right, but they went down there to two weeks ago already. Yes, and started homestead homesteading our site location. Yeah, so everybody that's coming to the rally, be sure to look up Ron and Sharon, and tell them good job. Thank you. And now Ron <laughs> and Kim are down there. Yes. Uh, homesteading with them and then we're going to take off here in a couple of days in a couple of days we'll and we'll down. be down there and we're talking about leaving rv there from now and until until the rally until the rally and we can go down weekly yeah which yeah. is good you know for a couple of days go down spend a few days visit with uh, ron and sharon and ron, ron and, kim, and kim and uh and, and then whoever come else back. lands in the area and you guys we know several folks are headed that way so y'all yes. start showing up over the next few weeks and that'll be a good thing oh, that'll, that'll help be us so lock good. that site down and ron had a great idea to bring our old signs from last year yes and we'll kind of put them around and stake out the circle right because we've got between 50 and 60 rvs that want to be in the circle 
Right. And then we got another 40 or 50 that's going to be, be out around it. And there's plenty of room outside, which is great. Yeah. But we do have to stake out the property, that's for sure. There's plenty, plenty of room now. January the 1st, they've got a gym show in Quartzsite. Yeah. Uh, so come Christmas, there will be no extra room. If we don't have it staked out, it's probably gone. But uh, if you're headed that way, the sooner the better. Come on down. Yes, I put please. the GPS coordinates and I flew the drone down the path so you can see how to get there on our, our village site. So you should be able to find it. it, the information's there. And I've said it in the last several videos, the, the rally's full, it's totally full. We've got like 130 people and Signed we only up. need 100. We think that's all we can take right. care of right. to feed and, and have room to park. Right. But we've had about 15 cancel and our old, uh, backup list, some of those people have already made plans. Mm -hmm. And so they're not, I've offered a couple of them a chance to come to the rally and they've got plans. So if you're interested in getting on the backup list, send us an email, Bob or Pearl at gmail.com. And we're going to start a whole new backup list. And I'm guessing we'll be able to fit in between five and 15 RVs for people canceling. Right. And it just depends on how many people cancel. But, uh, I'm getting really excited. <laughs> this is we've got like 30 RVs from last year coming back. Yes, so we know those people yep. and they were all pretty cool. Yes. And then we've got like 70 RVs brand new that are people. brand we've, new. We've not new met RV yet. friends, yeah. Yes. We're and, anxious, very anxious. Mm -hmm. There's some of you guys that hadn't filled out the survey. We need to know everybody that's going to be there so we can get the right amount and the last survey had asked what um uh, community meals you want to join in, participate in, and if you've got a smoker and a Blackstone to help us cook and stuff. So please fill out that last sur survey. Please. And uh, It's important for us to know these things on that survey. And, and to make sure everybody's full at the meals, we need to <laughs> make sure we don't have more people show up to eat than, than what we than have, what have si for. signed yes. up. Speaking of that, here, in, well after Christmas, probably the first week of January, we'll be firming up who's going to contribute what food. Right. Everybody has volunteered to contribute different things and pretty much what you volunteered for is what it's going to be because it balanced out pretty good. But we'll have to change a few things and we're going to add a few things. Just a little bit, not yeah. not any big changes, but... You guys that's got smokers, I don't. some of you probably know this already, but we just figured out you can use those for an oven. Yes. We baked a broccoli casserole in it. We did, uh, we baked potatoes, baked potatoes. in it. Worked. They were awesome. They were Very as good, good. baked potatoes I ever had. They're great. Baked a turkey breast. Well, uh, yeah, cooked and smoked a turkey breast. That'd smoked be different. It, smoked yeah. it. Yes, yes. But we're thinking about for our breakfasts to get uh, add to our list of food biscuits, canned biscuits, and make uh, sausage, sausage and egg, egg McMuffin. McMuffins. Bake the uh, biscuits yes. in the smokers. Get probably only take four or five smokers. Right. And uh, so it's coming together. It's just going to be fun. And these eating events are going to be really cool. If you've got a smoker, please sign up and let us know you got it. We've got 14 smokers set up, uh, signed up, that's going to be there and help us cook. And, and we're going to start cooking about noon on January the 22nd, that Saturday. So right. try, if you've got a smoker, try to be there before noon on January 22nd. Be there and ready to cook. Please. Before <laughs> noon on January 22nd. We can use all the help we can get when it comes to yeah. the smokers and the Blackstone grills. Yeah. Please. We've got about 30 or 40 Blackstones. So we've got plenty of those. Oh, plenty of those? Smokers okay. we're just a little bit short of. Okay. And you guys that's going to use your Blackstone, we expect you probably cook two, like if you can put four burgers on there, four uh, uh, smash, what do we call them? Smash burgers. Smash burgers on there and then four oh, more. Yeah, you, you, you won't be cooking very long. It's no, perfect. they only take just a couple of minutes. Yeah, less than 10 minutes around. So you do that twice, you're way less than 30 minutes cooking. So it's not a whole lot of work as long as we got a bunch of us doing it. Right. Uh, 25 Blackstones and we can fix everybody's smash burger in 30 minutes. In 30 minutes. Yeah. We've had a, a number of people that's emailed us that are, I don't know if professional is the right word, but hobbyists professional food that do these kind of things. I think most of them do it for pay and some of them for fun. And they've written us emails and said, you guys are nuts, you can't do that. You can't feed 200 people with them dinky little smokers and We're them little mini going to do it. Like I was telling Pearl earlier, I appreciate all that input because we have forgot some things and some of these emails have helped us to uh, get stuff on the list. But to get 100 RVs 
and they're recommending hiring a, a food vendor guy to come out and right. a caterer and, and bring the food. Right. That's kind of, in my mind, that defeats the whole purpose. It's like if you was going fishing in the ocean and somebody roped you and said, hey man, that ocean's way too big and you the fish way too little. You'll never catch no fish. You need to go to Walmart and buy some fish. And not only that, that would be expensive and we just don't want to go to that major expense. Well, it would be expensive, but if that's what we needed to do, we'd figure yeah. out a way everybody could contribute. Right. But it takes away the fun. You don't want to go fishing and instead go buy the fish and then go out in the ocean. That's no fun. Same way with <laughs> catering our RV rather. Right, People that, right. these are for full-time RVers, retired full-time RVers mostly. That's what, why we're doing it. You could go get a motel, fly to a town and stay in a motel and go to the restaurant and eat, but no, you get an RV. We want to cook our own food and we want to, it, it just, that's the fun part of it. And also it's the camaraderie around cooking. We did it here on the patio experimenting and it was a great day. Yeah, it was a fun day. We had and plus, fun. whether we success or fail, it doesn't matter. It's going to make some great YouTube videos. So yes. either way, <laughs> as long as I got the camera rolling, it, it'll work out good. But we appreciate all the input that you guys have given us. Yes. And we're really, I agree with you. It seems like a crazy endeavor, but I don't, last year we had 50 RVs and it worked great. It worked no problem really at all. good. With and no it was, planning. And it was just prompt to yeah. meal plan. So we're yeah. doubling the size, but it should still go over smooth. And either way, we'll make good videos. And speaking of the surveys, we've got, uh, we need you guys to fill those out so we know how many people are eating at each meal and what people are going to bring for food. But also we need to know uh, what events you're interested in doing. Exactly. We've got uh, Dave from Iron Endeavor. He's going to do his geocaching class again. That was right. real popular last year. Very good. Karen from Karen's New Journey. Yes. She's going to do a rock painting class. And she is an incredible talented artist. Yeah. yeah. And she, she says she thinks she's got some tips that she can give that will, some easy tips you can learn in one little class to be a better, rock, make it a little bit more in depth and a little more realistic looking. Right. So I'm thinking you, you'll you enjoy doing that. We need to know who's interested in that. We might talk her into doing two classes if, if there's the interest. Speaking of artists, if you play a musical instrument, we got Dale's coming back and Ted's coming back. And then Jim Bertrand from up in Canada, I think he's a great musician and singer. He's wanting to play with the guys. So let us know if you play an instrument. And we're going to also have a little more karaoke. If you're interested in that, be sure and let Marsha know. There's always some activities going on around the campfire. And then we got uh, Lori from Tom and Lori's RV Life. Lori's RV Life. She's going to do the same as last year, her jewelry making. Jewelry making and, and three-dimensional card yeah. making. And both of those are popular. We had, there's a lot of people signed up for those. Yes. And Lanny from Crafty Travelers, she's doing a water painting card, I think it is. I think so. So another painting. So there's a lot of fun things going on. Plus there's another idea. One of the gals wants to do a scavenger hunt. Yep. Uh, Nancy? Yes. She is, uh, she went to an RV rally in Florida. I still can't remember their name. The motorhome experiment. Okay. They did one in Florida a couple of years ago and she went to it and a couple of other you guys went to it, I think as well. But they did a scavenger hunt. She said it was a ton of fun. So yes. she's gonna, if there's an interest there, she's gonna set that up and do that. Earl and Sue wanna do a recipe swap? Yes, please. <laughs> How does that work? Well, you have your favorite recipes, your go-to recipes, something that you can do in the RV that's quite easy to do and just print out the recipe and yeah, if you make a written copy of your recipe especially if you're going to do this recipe at one of the community at meals and one, one of the, of the community lux. meals so people eat your recipe and it's really good yes there's a pit there's the recipes there you can just take your phone take a picture of take it take a picture of it and you've got your record or if you've got a recipe that maybe doesn't fit into the potluck but you think it's a but, neat one that you're willing to share yes like your persimmon cookies maybe or your rum cake yes Make those, print those recipes up and people can just take a picture of them if they and want to yes. swap them. Yes. So that'd be fun. And then uh, Sue's husband, Rich, wants to do a tips, tricks, and hacks. And hacks. Kind of a coffee get together every morning for the guys or the guys and the gals if y'all want to come too. Right. And talk about the different things that you've learned that make uh, 
RVing or driving your motor home or you're hooking up your uh, fifth wheel or whatever, whatever kind of neat thing you've got, uh, figured out to yeah. share. So we may, and that's when we may do it. Also talk about thousand trails. I know a lot of people right. are interested in that. And it's community information. Yeah. It, it's sharing your tips and your tricks on how to's. Yeah. So that's good. And then uh, we'll probably talk about thousand trails. We we'll talk about uh, the couple of things that Pearl and I have learned about uh, uh, boondocking in the national forest and mm -hmm. uh, the national grasslands and stuff up north. And and if you guys got some experience, and I know a lot of you do, you know, we need you to come and share that knowledge of exactly. your boondocking experiences. How do you find these good campsites? So there's definitely, that's probably the highest rating of all of the classes and events is the tips, free boondocking in national forests. There's been more responses of people. Ah. I think 70 or something like that. People said, yeah, I want to okay, very good. There's a bunch of them. So there's a lot of stuff going on, but we need to know what your interests are. Yes. And if you've got, we've had a couple of people volunteer to bring prizes for the bingo games. We've got oh. some like these logoed cups and we've got some logoed mugs and uh, some logoed caps, those kind of things for bingo prizes like we right. did last year. But several people have volunteered to bring some prizes, some nice prizes uh, for the bingo games or the drawings. And I think we're probably going to give away a couple of portable power stations. So if you've got something that you don't really use anymore that really, especially RV centric stuff, uh, maybe bring that. Rick, you use them for bingo prizes or raffle drawings or right. whatever. Like I said a while ago, we're going up to Quartzsite here in a couple of days and uh, get to visit with Ron and Sharon because they've been saving a spot and now Ron, Ron and Cam are up him. there. So we get yes. to measure with all of those and Ron's going to head up our parking. Uh, how we're going to, you'll check in with Pearl or me and then we'll send you out to Ron and he'll probably have a crew of four or five people helping park everybody. We're going to try to get all that drawn out so we know how we're going to fit 50 right. or 60 RBs in there. Right. We did it last year. I know we can do it again if we got the same spot. Yeah. And while we're up there, we've got a couple of, well, we got one now and then one on the way, portable power stations we're doing these uh, product reviews on. Right. And this one's a pretty good one that we'll, we'll put this out in the next couple of weeks, but it's 1100 watt hour and it will power a small microwave or a small coffee pot, right. which is pretty exciting. So we want to get some film up there for Quartzsite. A lot of you guys, a couple of you guys have been emailing us saying, have you got any video? Show us where we're going to be and, and tell us what's going on that are back on the East Coast. And they're just now getting fired up about heading this away. <laughs> so stay tuned for those product reviews. And even though you may not be interested in portable power station, just know that there's going to be some uh, drone footage and whatnot of uh, our site where we're going to be. So we're kind of give you an idea. And if any of you guys are getting close or you're already in Arizona on our, our village site, we put a drone video of how do you get to our site from last year and it's the same way and uh, the GPS coordinates. So if you're already on the confirmed list and you're a member of the our village site, you can get the GPS coordinates there and come on out. We need RVs out there as many as we can get. So as we can try we can and get. lock down this location. Yeah. <laughs> so we're preparing the coach and getting ready for our trip to Quartzsite. Yeah, it feels funny packing only for a couple of days. I know. <laughs> no, I don't need to odd. take that. It's only two days. Very often. We're used to packing everything we own. <laughs> Almost. So anyway, that's kind of got you caught up. We're going to be finished packing up today. It's going to rain tomorrow and then we're heading out the next day. Yes. So in the meantime, Keep the wheels rolling. Stay safe. We'll see you at the next exit, folks. Bye-bye, folks. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.